Here we are at a lecture hall at V Ohio State University. I'm Bart Snap. Today we're going to see how we can use calculus to study the path of an object through space. In particular, this orange ball. When the ball leaves my hand, it's going pretty fast. But as it approaches the ground, it's going faster and faster and faster until it hits the ground, bounces up at nearly the same speed, and then it's going quickly but slower, slower, slower until it reaches its pinnacle, and then it's stopped, and then it starts falling back down again, slowly at first, but then quicker, quicker, and quicker, and then I grab the ball. So how fast was the ball moving? Well, let's see. The total distance the ball traveled was about 3.14 meters. And the total time the ball traveled for was about 1.1 seconds. Dividing this, we find this is equal to 2.85 meters per second. This is the average speed of the ball. Now of course I, I took the ball and I, I threw it down with, with some force and then it came back up and hovered here and then came back down if you recall. So what I'm trying to say is the speed of the ball was changing the entire time and this is the average speed and so sometimes the speed was faster and sometimes it was slower here. So think about when I just threw the ball down. From leaving my hand to touching the ground, that was about 0.2 seconds. And the distance it traveled was about 1 meter. 1 meter divided by 0.2 seconds is 5 meters per second. So we found the average speed to be 2.85 meters per second. But that's not really the instantaneous speed of the ball because when I threw down the ball, the ball was traveling much faster and then the ball bounced up and then it started slowing down and then it slowed down to almost no speed at all and then it came back into my hand going a little faster. So how do we figure out how fast the ball is going at, say, one of those other time intervals. So we found the average speed over the course of the entire trajectory, the, the full 1.1 seconds, to be 2.85 meters per second. However, if we only consider the first 0.2 seconds, we find the average speed to be 5 meters per second. This makes sense, because if you watch the video, you see the ball is moving rather quickly in the first 0.2 seconds of its trajectory. You're probably asking yourself, how does Bart know that the ball traveled one meter during the first 0.2 seconds of its journey and 3.14 meters during the whole 1.1 second journey down, up, and down? Well, we know this because we've got the video. Uh, here, Bart is just about to release the ball from his hand. And one, two, three, four, five, six frames later, the ball hits the ground. There's 30 frames being shot in every second, so that means that it took 6 over 30, or 0.2 seconds, for the ball to hit the ground. Making a bunch more measurements, I can combine all this information in a graph. This is a graph of a function. The input to this function is time. So along the x-axis, I'm plotting time in seconds. The output to the function is the height, the height of the ball at that particular moment in time. Now, armed with this graph, I can go back now and try to figure out how fast the ball is moving at, say, 0.4 seconds after Bart releases it and at 0.8 seconds after Bart releases it. So let's try to figure out how fast the ball is moving at 0.4 seconds. Here I've marked the position of the ball 0.4 seconds after Bart releases the ball. Now we don't really have any way of figuring out how fast the ball is moving at that particular moment. What I can do is figure out the average speed of the ball during some time interval. So sort of a first guess to how fast the thing is moving at 0.4 seconds 
I'm going to figure out the average speed of the ball between 0.4 seconds and 0.6 seconds. All right, so I've got this handy table here of function values. At 0.4 seconds, the, uh, the ball was 101.1 centimeters above the ground. And 0.6 seconds after Bart released the ball, the ball was 161.8 centimeters above the ground. So I can put that information together to figure out the speed of the ball between 0.4 and 0.6 seconds. All right. So uh, 0.4 seconds to say 0.6 seconds. At 0.4 seconds on my chart, the ball was 101.1 centimeters above the ground. At 0.6 seconds, the ball was 161.8 centimeters above the ground. Now this time interval has a length of 0.2 seconds. And how far did the ball move during that time interval? Well, 161.8 minus 101.1 is 60.7 centimeters. So during the 0.2 seconds that elapsed from 0.4 seconds to 0.6 seconds after Bart released the ball, the ball traveled a distance of 60.7 centimeters, which means the speed, which is the distance traveled over time, is 60.7 over 0.2 centimeters per second, which is uh, 303.5 centimeters per second or 3.035 meters per second, which is about 7 miles per hour. Now, I could do a little bit better. Right? Here I'm calculating the average speed of the ball between 0.4 and 0.6 seconds. But I'm trying to figure out how fast the ball is moving at this particular moment. So instead of just calculating the average speed during this time interval to be about 7 miles per hour, I could do it over a shorter time interval. Right? Instead of 0.6 to 0.4, I could go from 0.4 to, say, 0.5. Here's half a second after Bart released the ball. And I could figure out the average speed of the ball during this part of its trajectory. Let's see how we calculate that. Well, it's the same kind of game. Right? 0.4 seconds after Bart released the ball, the ball was 101.1 centimeters above the ground. 0.5 seconds after Bart released the ball, looking back at my table, I find that the ball was 136.5 centimeters above the ground. 136.5 centimeters. This time interval was 0.1 seconds long. And how far did the ball move during that time interval? Well, that's 35.4 centimeters. 136.5 minus 101.1 is 35.4. So the ball moved 35.4 centimeters during the 0.1 seconds that elapsed, 0.4 seconds to 0.5 seconds after Bart released the ball. Speed is how far you've traveled over how long it took you. So if I divide these, this is the speed of the ball, the average speed of the ball, between 0.4 and 0.5 seconds. And this works out to be 354 centimeters per second. I mean, I'm dividing by this very nice number, 0.1, you know, which is the same as 3.45 meters per second, which is about 8 miles per hour. And indeed, if you look back at this, this chart, between 0.4 and 0.6 seconds, yeah, maybe the average speed was eh, about 7 miles per hour. Between 0.4 and 0.5 seconds, the average speed was a little bit higher. You know, the average speed here worked out to be 8 miles per hour instead of 7 miles per hour. The average speed of the ball during this time interval is higher than during this whole time interval. But we're still not there. We're trying to figure out how fast the ball is moving at this particular moment, right? not the average speed between 0.4 and 0.5 seconds. To get closer, right, we should take an even smaller time interval. Instead of 0.4 to 0.5, well, why not look back on our handy chart here and see, well, here's where the ball is at 0.4 seconds. Here's where the ball is at 0.42 seconds. We could use this information to figure out the uh, speed of the ball just during the very tiny time interval between 0.4 and 0.42 seconds after Bart releases the ball. Well, let's do that.
All right, so again, 0.4 seconds after Bart releases the ball, the ball is 101.1 centimeters above the ground. 0.42 seconds after Bart releases the ball, the ball is 109 centimeters above the ground. Right? That's what this chart is telling me. 0.42 seconds after Bart releases the ball, 109 centimeters above the ground. So that means during the very tiny time interval, 0.02 seconds that elapsed between 0.4 seconds and 0.42 seconds after Bart releases the ball, the ball has traveled how far? Well, 109 minus 101.1 centimeters is just 7.9 centimeters. So in two hundredths of a second, the ball has traveled 7.9 centimeters. To figure out the speed, I again divide 7.9 divided by 0.02 is 395 centimeters per second, which is 3.95 meters per second, which is about 9 miles per hour. This is a much better approximation to the instantaneous speed of the ball at 0.4 seconds. Look, here's the graph again. Right? Between 0.4 and 0.6 seconds, the ball's traveling yeah, maybe 7 miles per hour on average. Between 0.4 and 0.5 seconds, the ball's traveling maybe 8 miles per hour. Between 0.4 and 0.42 seconds, we just calculated that the speed of the ball is about 9 miles per hour. And that makes a whole lot of sense, right? The speed of the ball from here to here is slower than the average speed from here to here, which is slower than the average speed from 0.4 to 0.42 seconds. The ball's slowing down in its trajectory, so the average speed over these shorter time intervals is decreasing. So let's figure out how fast the ball was moving at 0.8 seconds. That's when the ball was at the top of its trajectory. Ah, but we can't really do that. All I can really do is figure out the average speed of the ball over some time interval. But I've got a table of values of the function, and I know how high the ball was at 0.8 seconds after release. It was 182 centimeters, and I can compute its average speed over a very short time interval, like the time interval between 0.8 and 0.81 seconds after release. Right? And the ball didn't move very far during that time interval, but of course, that time interval also isn't very long, so it's not super clear how fast the ball might be moving on average during that time interval. We can do the calculation, though. Let's do it now. So, 0.8 seconds after the ball was released, the ball was 182 centimeters above the ground. 0.81 seconds after the ball was released, the ball was 181.9 centimeters above the ground. Now this time interval between 0.8 and 0.81 seconds has a duration of just one hundredth of a second. 0.81 minus 0.8 is 0.01. This is a very short amount of time. And during that short amount of time, how far did the ball move? Well, 181.9 minus 182 centimeters, that's just 0.1 centimeters. And if we're being pedantic, it's negative 0.1 centimeters. Right? The ball fell between 0.8 and 0.81 seconds. So this number is recording not only how far it moved, but also the direction that it moved in. It's really displacement instead of a distance. Anyhow, 0.01 centimeters divided by 0.01 seconds, that'll give me the velocity, right? displacement over time. So if I divide these, this ratio here is 10 centimeters per second, or negative 10 if I'm keeping track of the direction it's moving in. It's falling down at a speed, on average, of 10 centimeters per second during this time interval. That's uh, minus 0.1 meters per second, which is about 0.2 miles per hour, or negative 0.2 miles per hour, if I'm keeping track of the direction it's going. Anyway, 0.2 miles per hour is a really slow speed, right? The ball is not moving very much, on average, between 0.8 and 0.81 seconds. In light of this, it might make sense to say that the instantaneous speed of the ball at 0.4 seconds is 9 miles per hour. Uh, why? Well, the average speed between 0.4 and 0.6 seconds is maybe 7 miles per hour. The average speed from 0.4 to 0.5 is about 8 miles per hour. The average speed between 0.4 and 0.42 seconds is about 9 miles per hour. Now, and based on this, it seems like if we took a really short time interval, 
just after 0.4 seconds and tried to calculate how fast the ball was going on average during that very small time interval, you might conclude that the average speed during a very small time interval is about 9 miles per hour. And it's in that sense that we're going to say that the instantaneous speed of the ball at 0.4 seconds is 9 miles per hour. We can play the same game 0.8 seconds into the ball's journey, right? When it's just at the top of its trajectory. So the average speed of the ball between 0.8 and 0.81 seconds is exceedingly slow. And you can see that in the video, right? The ball is barely moving at the top of its trajectory. What's the instantaneous speed of the ball at the top of its trajectory? It's zero, right? I mean, yes, the average speed over a time interval between 0.8 and 0.8000001 seconds isn't zero. But if you look at an average speed over an exceedingly small time interval, those average speeds over shorter and shorter time intervals are as close to zero as you like. That's the sense in which the instantaneous velocity at the top of the trajectory, the limit of the average velocities over small time intervals, is zero. Isn't calculus amazing? We're using the idea of limits to compute instantaneous speed. Using a little bit of math, we can understand the world around us. That's the power of calculus.